In this video, I'm going to be showing you the exact steps that you need to take in order to create more streams of revenue with your studio sessions and create pro level high quality mixes in FL Studio. You get me. I've acquired these skills over the last 17 years of being in the music industry, and I'm happy to share them with you. So stick around all the way to the end and take some notes. So in the last three videos, I showed you why optimized vocal production is the best way to achieve high quality mixes with FL Studio, why you don't need to learn a new DAW, and how you can use these skills in order to create more revenue for your business. So if you didn't catch those videos, I suggest you go back and watch them because there's a ton of great info in there. With that being said, let's hop right into the optimized vocal production blueprint. And once again, this is the the exact blueprint that I've used in my personal career over the last 17 years of being in the music industry. Step number one is getting all of your gear in order to get a clean, pro sounding vocal signal. If you watch the second video in this series, you know the first steps concerning the hardware and gear. There's a little bit more that I'd like to explain here. On top of having all this gear, it's really important to keep in mind that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on the top level gear in order to start your journey as a successful audio engineer. I personally started out with a $500 laptop, a $200 mic microphone and a $100 interface. Most of these you probably already have in your home studio. It's all about the knowledge you bring to the table and I'm here to help you with that. Step number two is actually getting all of this gear set up and working properly with FL Studio. You'll need to know how to connect all of these pieces of gear correctly in order to get the best quality you can from mic placement, try finding a quiet and low natural sounding reverb spot in your home studio or your bedroom. Using acoustic panels or sound absorption is greatly going to help you here. This will make for the best and cleanest raw recording you can get. Another way you can make sure your signal is clean is get your buffer setting straight. Step number three is one of the most efficient things I will teach you. It's creating a live vocal effect. Chain. Creating a live vocal effects chain will speed up your workflow resulting in happier clients and overall better sounding recordings and mixes. It improves the live signal and the artist will hear it in real time. You won't have to worry about turning up the gain and cutting back on the beat volume because this chain will give you a pre-mixed sound that practically sounds like the final mix. All you're going to have to do in the end is some final adjustments on compression, EQ, and leveling. Step number four is about getting your sessions ready to record. This means getting your beat and or beat stems in a quick and organized fashion. Finding the tempo of your beat is one of the most important things you can do towards the beginning of your session. This is super important because the tempo of that beat will drive the entire session. Your delays, echoes, and other effects are driven by the synced tempo. And if we don't set it right at the beginning, we're going to have huge issues later on. Step number five is where we will finally have our recording artist in the studio. We're going to need to do at least one test run on the vocalist to make sure we aren't clipping and the artist can hear themselves in the headphones correctly. Once you do this, it's time to focus on the song and delivering of the vocals. Recording multiple main takes and saving them for later on is a great idea. This is called comping. After we have a couple of good takes of each main vocal, we can begin comping. This is so we can get the absolute best main vocal take for the final mix. In most songs, we need to focus on layering if the parts call for it. Doubles and ad-libs are something that almost every song has in some way, shape, or form. Recording and mixing these can be tricky and it's an art in itself. These dubs and ad-libs are super important and can bring so much life and dynamic to the song. So making suggestions to the artist is going to be another thing that sets you apart from other audio engineers. Also, while I'm recording, I like to do something that I call pre-mixing. What I mean by this, while the artist is recording, I will be cleaning any dead space that are in the vocal tracks and adding them to the mixer if needed. All these steps are going to be showed in detail plus so much more in my upcoming course called vocal hacking with fl studio i'll be showing you in detail how i get pro level quality mixes and how i interact with an artist in the studio live you're basically going to be a fly on the wall as i interact and record an artist in this very studio right here you're going to see how i record tune vocals mix master all in fl studio so make sure in the next few days you're on the lookout for the course when it drops you can also hit the link down in the description below to join the early bird list as it is filling up and it will sell out that being said in the next video i'm going to be showing you a detailed case study on how it's like to be up and running with optimized vocal production so stay tuned to the next video make sure to share this with a friend if you get me